Shavua Tov, Agut Avoch, and welcome to our program. This is the broadcast before the wonderful Yom Tif of Purim. Concerning Purim, it says in the Tukuni Zehar that what does Yem Kippurim mean? The day of Kippurim. Yem Kippurim means Yem Kippurim, like Purim. Now that's something that's not easy to understand. Purim is, Yom Kippur is the holiest day, day in the year. We do not eat, we do not drink, and so on. And we're a whole day in shul. The holiest day, we're like Malochim. Now, Yom Kippur, now we are told that Yom Kippur is like Purim. Not that Purim is like Yom Kippur. Even that we would have to understand. Here we are told that Yom Kippur is Kippurim, like Purim. How do you reconcile that? Also, we find in the Megillah, it says, Vikibel Hayehudim. Now, Vikibel Hayehudim is a contradiction in terms. Vikibel is in singular, Hayehudim is in plural. So it's either, arguably, you should have said Vikiblu Hayehudim, or Vikibel Hayehudim, both, either both in plural or both in singular. Here it says, Vikibel in singular, Hayehudim in plural. How do we understand that? We also find in the Megillah that Jews are called Yehudim. Not only that, concerning Mordechai Hayehudim, even before it says his name, it starts with Ish Yehudi. And the question is, Ish Yehudi? Why is he called Yehudi? Others say because he came from the, mon- from the tribe of Yehudo. That's not the case. Ishimini, he came from the tribe of, Binyom, tribe of Binyomin. So even before we know his name, he's already called Ish Yehudi. The Jews are called Yehudim. Why especially Yehudim? And if Yehudi comes from the word Yehuda, that would mean only the people from Yehuda. But here we're talking about all Jews. So how do we understand that? Plus, Kimuvi Kiblu Yehudim says after that in the Megillah. So then it says Kimuvi Kiblu in plural. So first it says Vikibel Yehudim in singular. And after that in the same Megillah it says in plural. So why does it say first a singular and then in plural? Plus, the general concept, Kiyem Vikiblu Yehudim, the Drush is, Kimu Mashikiblu Kval, that they have now, they have accepted, they have performed, what they have already accepted. And the explanation is that whatever we were told by Martin Taylor, now they have accepted it. And the question for us is, what really happened here? What is it that we were told at Martin Taylor and we did not do it yet, and we're doing it now? We will return to that in a moment, but first, our customary story. The story took place in the year of Shinun Beis, which is a very, very sensitive year in the history of Chabad and the Rebbe, the Rebbe and Chabad. The date was Thursday, the second day of the month of Odor. Thursday was the first day, was the second day of the Shredesh, and this Wednesday, and this was on Thursday. On Wednesday, I send in a report to the Rebbe about the activities of Mate Mashiach. On Thursday, Beis Odel, the Rebbe replied, and he scabbled about the, the activities, and then the Rebbe ad- added, Shiro vezimero shishim yim. Shiro means to sing, and that is by mouth. Zimero is through um, musical instruments, Shishim Yem, 60 days. This was on Thursday, as mentioned. Shabbos, there was a Fabrengen, Shabbos was Dalid Oder, it was Pastor Strumo that year. 
the Rebbe spoke. And at the Fabringen, the, the Rebbe explained the concept of botil b'shishim, that there's a halachi concept, concept that something that there are 60 against it, then that is an old. It's an old, an old in the 60. If something that's not kosher falls into something that has 60 times as much in a, in, 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 a, in, in kosher items, then the non-kosher item is, is an old. It's botel b'shishim, a known halachi concept of botel b'shishim. And the Rebbe explained, what does that have to do with this year? There are 60 days of order. And therefore, all the inyonim built to the all the matters that are not happy matters, should be annulled in the 60 days of Simcha of order. Which in retrospect, it means the Rebbe was talking about Chof Zion Oder Rishin. And the Rebbe was saying, that through the shield of Azimro, through singing and dancing with music, it will be botil b'shishim that the, the the matters that are not happy matters of order, namely chof, the matter of chov zayin order lishin, will be botil b'shishim in the sixty days of singing and dancing of the two months of order. And the Rebbe wanted to annul chov zayin order. That was the Rebbe's kavona. We know that things, Almighty God wanted things to be, to be different, which we do not understand. But the Rebbe answered, Shiro Vezimiro Shishim Yim, singing and dancing, and Baruch Hashem it was done. And the Rebbe says, All health and all thine simchas in all matters. The Rebbe say concerning the question, the Rebbe asks these question, these questions in a Maimel in the year of Shin Lamed Beis, 1972. The Maimel starts with Kibel HaYehudim. And in this Maimel, the Rebbe asks the question, and we're going to go and we'll see that the Rebbe is asking all the questions that we have mentioned before, and the Rebbe provides us with the answers to those questions. We find, the Rebbe says, that in the Megillah, all Jews are called Yisroel. All Jews are called Yehudim, especially Yehudim. Although they came from all tribes, and not necessarily from the tribe of Yehuda. They came from Eluvin and Shimon and Levi and Yehuda from all tribes. And Mordechai himself is called Ish Yehudi, not because Mordechai came from the tribe of Yehuda, because he did not. He came from the tribe of Binyamin, Ishimini. Nevertheless, Mordechai, even before we heard of his name, we were told Ish Yehudi. Why, why necessarily Yehudi? And the Rebbe explains that the, the difference between the Shvotim is although they come from different forefathers, different children of Yankiv of Inu, there's also a difference in, in character. Every Shevet is different in, in, in his character, in his nature, in his way of service to Hashem. Therefore, there are some, there are some Shvotim that are on a higher plateau, as she says, the, the Shevet of Yehuda, as she says it, in, in the Blech Mishkon, the Sam Shvatim that are, are on a lower plateau called Yerudim, Yerud Shebi Shvatim, the lower, uh, 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 the, from, from, the, from the Shevet, that is from the lower part of the Shvatim. Nevertheless, there is one thing that all Jews are the same. And that is, they all have a Neshome, the Neshome is Chelik Elokami Mal Mamish. A part, Elokami is not a part of godliness. Chelik Elokai, it doesn't say Chelik Elokim. The Alter Rebbe in the second period of Tanya, it says Chelik Eloika, which means a part of God. Every, and that is every Jew, and that is the common denominator of every Jew. 
And therefore, here they're called Yehudim, because the one who who denies Aveda Zola, who doesn't believe in Aveda Zola, and is, pri- is proud to be a Jew in the gold Mercedes Nefesh, on, a Jew, he's called, on, Jew, on being Jewish, he's called Yehudi. But now we have to understand. So when did this smile happen? Now? What about the Jews when they went out of Mitzrayim? So here, we keep it high. Yehudim is on the Jews in the, in the days of Mordechai, not on those in the days of Meshach Rabbeinu. So therefore, there has to be a certain advantage that the Jews in the, in the generation of Mordechai and Esther had over the Jews in the generation of Meshach Rabbeinu and the generation of Matan Teda. The Rebbe in this Maimel, and in many and in many sikhas over the years, spoke about the fact that this was a special generation. And the Rebbe spoke about it with great fervor, with with with, with, with heart, with soul, with uh, about about the specialty of that generation. And what was the specialty of that generation? We Jews know something about Mr. Nefesh. Unfortunately, in every generation, we witness Jews who give away their life on Mr. Nefesh because they're Jewish. Nevertheless, it's not, it's not the entire generation. It's some people in the generation. Many times it's Rabonim, uh, Hasidim or uh, Rashi Yeshiva who give away their lives because these were special Jews. Plus, the Mesidus Nefesh is not a constant one. For that moment, for that day, they had Mesidus Nefesh and Umosilu Nafshom al Kedusha Sashim. But these were particular individuals. It's not the entire nation. Here, the Rebbe says again and again and again. It was the entire nation. Haman's decree was And they knew it a year before. Come the twenty-third day of order, all Jews have to be destroyed will be destroyed. The Rebbe says that people in the generation had a whole year. They could have done something about it. Mostly, says the Rebbe. They could have. They could have said, "It says here, it's called Yehudim, right? The decree is against all Jews. They are from Podas, from Modai, from one of the hundred and twenty-seven Medinas of Malchus Achashverosh." It doesn't mean them. They could have said, "Yehudim at somebody else. They are Podas, Modai. They are. They are Persian. Whatever you want." They could have said that, and and they would have been released from the decree. So now you're talking about an entire generation and not one day of Mesidus Nefesh, a whole year of Mesidus Nefesh, an entire generation of men, women, and children. Everybody, Amcha, everyone. Everyone stood in Mesidus Nefesh for an entire year and they gave up their lives for the name, for the name Jew. So therefore, this generation is called Yehudim. Why are they different from the generation of Meshach Rabbeinu? In the time of the generation of Meshach Rabbeinu and Matan Taylor, they did not have to sacrifice their lives to, to remain alive. And they did not have to make an announcement that they are Jewish in order to remain alive. Almighty God took care of them. Here, there was a decree. Lashmid la legulabe that's called Ayhudim to destroy all Jews. And not one single one, the Rebbe says it so many times. Nobody defected. Nobody says it doesn't mean me. Uh, Yehudim, what do you want from me? Uh, I am from Polas, Modai, Malchus, Achashvelish, whatever you want. No one said that. So this is Mesidus Nefesh of, of an entire nation. An entire year. Everyone in an entire year. And this is why this was a special generation. Now you're asking a question, why does it say 
Kibel is in singular. Hayyudim is in plural. I should have said, as we said before, they keep blue Hayyu, keep blue Hayyudim, because they have all accepted it like one, just like Mordechai, just like Mordechai was complete in his amuna that he is Yehudi. Every Jewish man, woman, and child were complete in their amuna, and this is why they are all called Yehudim. And the Rebbe continues that this Mesidus Nefesh was for everyone, and here I was a Mesidus Nefesh Bepeil. Kimu Vikiblu Ayhudim later, after Pulim, it says Kimu Vikiblu in plural. But before Pulim, they accepted it, Kibel Ayhudim, in all as one. And then they had to do. The practice of Taylor Mitzvahs and everybody had uh, did it in their own way. That's why later it says Ki movie ki Hayudim. Now we have the question. The Tikkuni Zehar says that it's that what does Yem Ki Puli mean? A day like Pulim. And you probably were asking yourself the same question. Yem Kippur is a day like Pulim. How do you understand that? Doesn't even say that Pulim is a day like Yom Kippur, and also that would need an explanation. Yom Kippur is a day like Pulim. But in view of what the Rebbe said, we can understand it. Pulim is a day where the entire nation stood in practical Mesidus Nefesh. Not only Mesidus Nefesh, just in case someone is going to come and put a and put a gun to their head, they will have Mesidus Nefesh. They came already, and the gun was there. And nevertheless, everyone stood the Mesidus Nefesh. So therefore, now comes the Tikkun and he says, "What's the specialty of of Yom Kippur? The specialty of Yom Kippur is that there's a revelation that every Jew feels special, feels holy." On, on, on Purim, everyone, not only not only in theory, but in practicality, which is much more than any Yom Kippur. Baruch Hashem. Yom Kippur is not a day where, where, where a Jew has to say he's going to go on Mr. Snevish because somebody standing, is standing in front of him with a gun and shoots. This doesn't happen on Yom Kippur. Baruch Hashem. But it happened in the time of Mordechai and Esther. So therefore, now we see that the Kunizel says that the Purim that we know at best is like a day, the Yom Kippur that we know, excuse me, is like a day, keep Purim, like Purim. Just like Purim, the Jews were in, 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 in a state of Mesidus Nefesh, in a practical Mesidus Nefesh. Now we don't have to be in the practical Mesidus Nefesh because Baruch Hashem, no one is after us. But this is what Pulim should be. That in our life, we should feel that the connection to Almighty God in the highest form. By the way, you could say that from all your Mim Tevim by the Rebbe, there were happy days, uh, Simcha Steyr and so on. The day where you saw the Simcha more than any other day was the day of Pulim. When well, you saw the, 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 I don't know how to explain that, but when when you saw the the special inner simcha that was in a way that even we can see, was on Purim. That revelation that did not come to expression even on Simcha Steyla all the time, on Purim it came, in, it came to expression. That everyone was able to see the great simcha, the great joy of love of the Rebbe, the fact that we are a Jewish people. And in that we're all united. In everything else, in Machshove, in Dibula, Maise, in Mitzvahs, we're not the same. There are people on a higher plateau, on a lower plateau. But in the fact of Mesidus Nefesh, that we are all Jews, and every single one of us, including everyone, excluding no one, is a Chelek Elokan, as mentioned before. Elokan does not mean godliness, Elokan means God. In that we are all united. So this was. The specialty of the of the month and of the Yontif of Purim. And the Rebbe in the same Maimel says that this is the Yontif 
that should have an effect on us for the entire year. And what do we say on Pesach? We say, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Avde Hashem. What does Avde Hashem mean? That we are free. We used to be Avde Pale. We used to be the slaves of Pale. On Pesach we say, Hallelujah, Avde Hashem. We are now the slaves and the servants of Almighty God. Nevertheless, this is only the preparation on Purim and on Pesach. It's only the preparation for the Geulah Ho Amiti Sviashlimo. And the Rebbe would always say these words, the Geulah Ho Amiti Sviashlimo. Geulah means the redemption, Ho Amit is the real redemption and the complete redemption. Comes a simple, a simple Jew from Chachmei Lijon, and you know we have those two. And says, what? A complete redemption? A real redemption? If it would say, if the Rebbe would say the redemption, we would understand. If it's not complete and if it's not real, then it's not a redemption. Why does the Rebbe have to say, the Rebbe said that so many times, more than anybody can count. And the answer on that, the Rebbe himself said, that we already had a geulo that was not Amitis and was not Shlemo. The Geula Spudim was a Geulo, and Geula Pesach was a Geulo. But there was not a real Geulo. Why? Because after that we were in Golas again. To prove that Pesach was not a real Geulo, you don't have to go far. If Pesach would have been a real Geulo, we would have been in the Tzitzel with Mashiach today. Unfortunately, Pesach was only a partial Geulo, and therefore we're still in Golas. And Gulu Amitis Vi Ashlimo, the Rebbe brings a Tesvis. Tesvis calls it, it's a Geulo Shiyesh Achareot Sa'al. It's a Geulo that there's agony after that. That was Pesach. And the Rebbe brings the Medrash. The Medrash says, Geulo Shiyesh Achareot Golos. It was a Geulo, but after that there was Golos again. Now we want a Geulo Shein Achareot Sa'al. That there's no agony after that. The Geulo, the, the everlasting Geulo. A Geulo Shein Achareot Golos. The everlasting Geulo, the Geulo Ho Amiti Sviashlemo. That's what we are looking for. And this is the Beisai, what is coming our way. And our generation is so lucky that we are the last generation of Golos and the first generation of Geulo. And our generation will see with our very own eyes the Geulo Ho Amiti Sviashlemo. Uva Golo Didan.